Hey, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Psalm 67. And I believe this is our last week on, on God's promises. And we're going to look today on God promises you a blessed life. And many of us sometimes have a hard time with that. Maybe something you've done in your past or whatever it might be. But God actually promises you a blessed life. And I want to show you in His Word, wherever you're at today, you're going to step into that. And how the Lord is, is going to bless you. He wants to bless you, but we somehow pull back because we feel we're not worthy. God promises you a, a blessed life, all of us. Let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful. Lord, we're so thankful that we're here today to worship you. Father, whatever's going on with anybody in their life right now, may they just focus on you. And Lord, we will give you the glory and the honor. We will give you all the praise. And we know you're going to come through. We know who you are. We're going to trust you today. I pray at the beginning of this message, Lord, whatever's going on in anybody's life, from a young person to a teenager to a grandma, whoever it might be, Lord, that you are going to come through. You're going to come through in their life. And Lord, I know if we just trust you, no matter what it looks like and what your word says today, it's going to happen. We're going to trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to look at Psalm 67. And uh, I'm going to read those verses in just a minute. Well, you know, isn't it amazing that uh, it's that time of year again? Now, I don't know if you knew this or not, but uh, oh, I think it was uh, a week ago, a week, a little over a week ago, there were some people that started to uh, camp outside of Best Buy. I don't know if you probably saw it, but over a week ago. So they were camping out of Best Buy. Anyway, so I'm going to read this little clip here out of the news uh, about holiday shoppers on Black Friday. Apparently, this was in a city out close to the suburb of Los Angeles, uh, shoppers apparently fought Thursday night over a Barbie doll. Over a Barbie doll in Walmart. Shoppers fought Thursday night over a Barbie doll. And then the article goes on further to say, uh, even threw a punch to get her hands on that Barbie. And then it goes on further. further. <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, uh, that fight didn't result in any arrest, but at least three other people were arrested. <laughs> And a woman was hospitalized overnight Friday in some other deals. Two women and a teenage girl were arrested on suspicion of assault. Uh, they were going after something, does it say, uh, after a certain whatever it might be, inside a, a coal store. They were arrested and all that was going on. And this is what this is what this time of year is all about. It's about fighting over Barbie dolls. Now, that being said, in your life and in, in my life, okay, and, and we look at what's going on and all those different things that are happening, what is it in our life that, that we look at that we kind of, that we, that we have to take control of, that, that we got to do it? And we're going to fight about it. We're going to fight with somebody else about it, us about it. I don't know what it is in your life, but... There's tensions that rise and all kinds of things that happen because of we, in our mind, think it's got to go a certain way. Now, when it comes to you, now I want you to listen to me. When it comes to you right now today, there's something that you've done maybe in your life. I don't know, it doesn't matter if you're a young person or, or older, that you feel you're not worthy of what God wants to do for you and how he wants to bless you. See, we, we live enough that we know ourselves well enough that we get to the place that maybe we're not, and we fill in the blank because of this and this and this. I just don't know if it can happen. And, and this is the way the Lord looks at me. That's not true. That's the lie of the devil. I want to encourage you today through God's word how he blesses you and how he wants to bless you. And then he is going to bless you. Look at Psalms chapter 67. I'm going to read down through, but just the first part, just to begin here. Psalm chapter 67. 
God be merciful to us. Stop. Let's stop right there. God be merciful. Do you know, this is how we look things. If you have everything lined up in your life, God is going to bless you. You've done this right. You've said this right. You threw some money in the offering best. You did. You said all, did all the right things this week. God's going to bless you. God doesn't bless you or me because of us. Because of me. God blesses you mercy because of his son, Jesus Christ. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, he sees Jesus when he sees you. And you accepted his son on the cross of Calvary. And by you and I accepting him as our Lord and Savior, what pleases him, he has grace on you because of his son, Jesus Christ. Because of that unmerited grace, nothing you could do to get to heaven, but you trusted him, you believed in him, he's going to give you favor in your life. It's not if you lost your temper last week or whatever took place and then you've blown it all. No, God wants to show you, yes, we live in this body, we're going to do things we should do, say things. I'm not excusing that. And we need to go to the Lord and confess those things. But I'm saying is we pull back from believing that God actually wants to bless us. What has to happen? What does he want to do? Well, it's nothing we do at the beginning. It's our step of faith that we accept Christ as our Savior. God be merciful to us. And bless us. This is psalmist saying. This is in the Bible. This is God's word. If it's in the Bible and it's God's word, he wants it to happen for us. And cause his face to shine upon us. We're going to get back to that in a minute. That your way may be known on earth. Your salvation among the nations. Let the people praise you, O oh God. That's us. Let all the people praise you. Oh, let the na nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Let the people praise you. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, we have an intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ. The Bible says God, our own God, shall bless us. God, and it says it again, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear us. Him. God wants to bless you where it is in your life and how he's going to do it. We're going to talk about that. But you know, isn't it isn't amazing how that what the Lord can do, especially this time of year when, when the sun comes out, whenever the sun comes out. <laughs> but in the summer, there's, there's a vitamin. That's why so many people do not get sick during the summer because you get so much, I believe it's vitamin D, that you get in the summer from the sun. Now, you don't go out in the sun a lot and all the time and stand and, you know, you can go to the other end and get skin cancer. But if you're modeler, you're in the sun, you know how good it is for your body. Your, your face is getting something from the sun. The sun, the physical sun that God created is shining on you. And whether you go out of town or wherever it might be, you always look at the sun. The sun beams come on your face. And it is amazing that feeling you get, that good feeling that you get you can't get any other way. It's natural. It's free. God created the sun. God causes, as it says, and let me read it again, and cause his face to shine upon us. You know, I'm going to say something, and I, I, I didn't know where I was going to go with this, but I'm just going to say, I think Novella's here today. My daughter, I know I'm going to embarrass her. She knows I was going to do this. Is the crazy grandson with you today? Is he here? Would you go get him for me for a minute? I got, got embarrassed with my kids. I didn't tell them I was going to do this. So anyways, here we go. You know, I was out with him the other night, and he said, Dad, I was home, you guy. You know, you know what I say? I'm a grandfather. It kind of... I stopped for a minute. I, did I just say that about me? I, I, how did I get to be this age? I, I don't understand that. But anyways, I'm a grandfather. I just said it again, and I still can't. I, I can't. When I, I want to grab it when it comes out of my mouth. I don't, I don't understand that. that. That's my parents. That's not me. Anyways, so we're out the other night, and somebody I ran into, and we're with Novella and, and, and Wade and... Tommy, I think, and a whole thing. Anyways, we're all out, and uh, so I hey, hey, uh, uh, how old is he? Oh, he's six months. Dad, 
uh, he's over nine months old. You know, you know, how, you know I don't understand any, uh, all this little stuff, but he's finally, here's what I'm getting, he's finally getting to the age to where, you know, he's, I hope I'm right, uh, 10 months now. Anyways, but he's finally getting, where are you, Novell? I can't keep having living here. Get him out of here, will you? Where'd you go? Okay, here he is, okay. All right, come on up here for a minute. Come here, you're gonna have to help me with the mic. What, did you fall asleep? Hey, Bubba. Hey, what's going on here? Huh? Hey, th you know the one when he when, when, when he okay, he wants to eat it. Listen, when he is in my presence, doesn't matter what's going on. He's right here, and I see his eyes, and he sees mine. It's all good. All right. Now, this is this is what. I want all of us to understand today. I want you all to understand. That's why I wanted to use some days as illustration. No matter what's going on at the house, you're not paying any attention to me right now, are you? Anybody's in here? All of you. Okay. No, matter what's, no matter what's going on, anything that's happening, once I get him and he's in the room with me, everything's good. I'm in his presence. He's in my presence. And whatever else is going on, it's all good. All right, here you go.
And they complain like, I want you to watch their life. Watch their life when they complain. Nothing's going on good in their life. They're complaining. I don't see it changing. I don't know about you, but the people I see complaining all around me, nothing good is happening. But those in the midst of their circumstance, no matter what is happening, and their focus is on Jesus, you know what? I just have to praise Jesus because, you know, it's the craziest thing that's going on in my life. But I'm so thankful, and I'm so thankful what the Lord's doing, and I know what He's doing. I don't understand it, but I know that He knows what He's doing for me. I'm going to bless Him. I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to thank Him. I'm going to thank Him that I'm already on the other side of this mess in my life. When you begin to do that, when you begin to look at your life, whatever it might be, and say, Lord, you saved me. You are my heavenly. Father. Let me say this again. You are my heavenly Father. And when you're in His presence and you feel that sun and that love that comes into your life, you cannot do anything else but thank Him. No matter what is happening in your life, where are you today? Question, are you thanking Lord? It doesn't look good. I don't like what's happening. I can't understand what's going on in my life. I'm hurting. I don't get it. Thank you for saving me. Thank you. And you start going down. Lord, I praise you. you got this hand. You've got it covered. What is God going to promise to do? God says he's promised you that he's going to bless your life. I don't think you believe that. God promised that he's going to bless your life in the middle of what you're going through, whatever it might be, all you have to do is two things. The first is to thank him. He's got to be. Are you going to trust him? That's tough. It's not easy. I'm not telling you it's easy. But I'm saying, what does the Bible say? The Bible says there's life and death in the power of the tongue. When you begin to speak and say out loud and you praise Jesus to others, to yourself and to him, watch what, watch your attitude change. Watch everything in life begins to change no matter what is happening. When you say, Lord, I don't get it, I understand it, but this is no surprise to you. Actually, you told me since the beginning when you saved me, beginning of time, you knew nothing was going to surprise you what is happening in my life at this very second of this very day. Nothing surprises you. You know everything that's going to happen. All you want from me is for me to trust you and to thank you. But you got it in. Now, when we begin to do that, something happens. And this is what I want you to do. We talked about this at the very beginning of the church about eight months ago. And I want to remind you again. Something you got to do. If you don't do this, it's not going to work. Because God says you got to do it. Because part of a trust and faith relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is this second thing that you got to do. I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter, uh, yeah, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses, I think it's verses 1 through 3. We're going to continue to look at what God has promised to bless us. He's given us a promise. And in the midst of whatever you face, whatever you're going through, where you're hurting or you're unsure, even as a young person, you don't know, maybe you're hurting, you don't know what God you don't, has planned for the rest of you. You don't have a clue what's going to happen in your life. You don't know as a teenager, or, or you don't even know if you're supposed to college, go to college or not. Going. Can I say something about that for a minute? I said, just said it a while ago. I want to say it again. God has gifted everybody in here to do something amazing that only you can do. And not everybody is supposed to go to college. Some people go to college. Some people don't. You want to try it, it doesn't work. Or if you go and you go in this My grandfather had an eighth grade education, built the largest church in America. My, my father was very successful and had a doctor's degree. It doesn't matter. What matters is, are you going to trust in your life what God has gifted you, only you to do, only you to do, and the way that begins, where you are in your life, right? He's promised to bless you. He wants to bless you. Begins when you praise Him today, right in the middle of your circumstance. So how do we start? 
What's the action plan? It's the most difficult thing to do. It's something you've got to do. You don't know how to do it. You're not trained to do it. And we get frustrated by doing it. And this is what God says to do if you want to be blessed. It's amazing. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since a, po a promise remains, there's a promise for you and I today. And here it is. Of entering his rest. Lest us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short. You know the Bible says next to a godly fear. That we're supposed to have a loving, godly fear of our Lord and Savior. We're not supposed to fear anything else in life. Nothing. Nothing. The only other thing that we're supposed to be afraid of is this. This, this verse. That we don't turn everything over. And what does it say? For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith. There it is. Faith. You've praised him in the middle of your circumstance. He's already got it handled. And those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. As he said, so I swore in my wrath. They shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. What's he saying? What's the Lord saying to us today? What do you and I have to do that's so hard to do? Are you listening? Here it is. And many of you won't do it. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is rest. Now, that seems so foreign. No, I'm going to get two, two jobs to make this happen. No, I, I, I'm just going to work harder. No, I'm, I got it figured out myself. I do this and this and this. It's going to solve the problem. No, I'm going to do this. You know what, Lord? We, I, this person, my, Lord, just get him out of my life and everything will be good. It work, whatever it might be, it's school. Instead of saying, you know what, Lord? You tell me in the book of Hebrews that I know it doesn't make sense, but all you tell me is I have to sit down and not do anything. He wants you to sit down. He loves you so much. He wants you to sit down. And watch him take over. Now I know it's foreign to you. It's not the world we live in. It's not the society we live in. It's not saying, you know, Lord, I know if I just say this or if I do this or if I just step in. Lord, I know if I, if I send a hundred resumes out, I know I'll get the right job. I don't believe in that. I, you can say whatever you want. That's fine. If you want to... You talk to people you know and you want to shoot emails and, and resumes out to people you're close with. Yes, you need to do that. And yes, you need to be involved in the process. But it's faith. It is your faith. And your faith says, Jesus, I so am looking to you. I'm going to praise you. And the action step that you tell me in the book of Hebrews is the only thing that you have to work towards today. And that's why we praise him. And we are promised to bless. You want to be blessed today? The only thing that you've got to work towards is to sit down. Stop it. Stop trying to figure it out yourself. Sit down. You don't have to be afraid. Because God says before the foundation of the world, I got it. I got you. I got you covered. You don't like what's going on. You, you, you're not sure what's happening. You're afraid for your kids and your grandkids, and, and you're going to protect them in every way. And you know, you know, you, you ever have you ever have one of those parents that got two or three kids? You never let the kids go in the same car together, anywhere, or the same activity together, or the same anything together. You know, they're they're called helicopter parents. They hover over their kids. That's what they're called. And they're constantly worried about everything that's going to happen again. You can't watch over your kids all the time. But what you can do is say, Lord, I praise you. I thank you. You know what? It's no surprise that we had these kids and, and you gave us these kids. And, and, and you're my heavenly father. You're their heavenly father. And I'm going to sit down. You got it. They're, they're, they're not, man, they're way out there in their teenage years and they're doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. How many 
many seeds did you sow in their life about Jesus? Do you think that's going to come back? Talking to a buddy of mine this week, and he was so far out in his late teenage years. I mean, anything and everything imagined. Yes, I did some stuff, but he did a, a lot more stuff. And I don't know how that came out, but anyways. So, anyway, so, all right. So we're talking. And he said, listen, all these seeds were sown when he was a kid. And he would go over to this one house. And he was over to his, and he knew the girl real well. He was about 17. She was 14. And she loved Jesus. She loved the Lord. Now he grew up as a kid in church early on. And she would call him name. I'll, I'll, I'll say Johnny. I'm not going to say his name. Johnny, when are you going to come to church? What's going on? Hey, the Lord can be. And the whole time, he is high as you can be. I'm telling you that for a reason. As high as he could be, selling dope, doing all the things he could do at 17 years of age, Jesus is so powerful, he would lay in the floor at that house so convicted because of the seeds that were sown. Today, he's in ministry. He loves Jesus because of the seeds that were sown by his parents in his life. He only knew all the stuff that went on. But the seeds were sown. And here's this little girl, come on. And he, he brought to her my mind the other day. And he spoke her name out. That Jesus, because the prayers of his parents, brought this little girl along. That loved Jesus. Kept hitting and hitting and hitting him. Not his parents. Not somebody else in the family. Do you get it? When you sit down in your life. God is going to bring somebody else along with that person, whoever it might be, because of your prayers, because of the seeds that you have sown. And all you got to do is look up to Jesus, let his face shine. Lord, I praise you and thank you. Bless me in your way and only the way you can. He says, okay, just rest. Rest and watch me do what you and I never be able to do. I don't care if you had all the money in the world, you couldn't fix it. Because God's Spirit only works on God's command. And when we get in the way, we mess it up. But when you sit down and you rest, you're blessed. You have just stepped in. So the Bible gives us a picture the children, you have just stepped in to your promised land. Do you know it's amazing in the promised land? The Bible says all those 40 years in the wilderness, there was manna, there was manna, there was manna, there was a cloud by day to cover from the desert heat. There was that big, amazing, I, thought, I, would, I would love, you know how I freeze up, I would love to see how that happened at night, that big pillar of fire at night over at children's or, and just like that big old big old heat wave coming right on down all night all night and just enough man just enough heat just enough air conditioning for 40 years all night but guess what the day that they stepped into the promised land all that stuff God was was using that for those young people who now got older to walk into that promised land to teach them here it is. This is where I want you to get a little bit of verse. You have no idea. You have no idea how God wants to bless you. The only thing that stops it is one, we get in the way, or we're not ready. Now, let me explain it. I explained we get in the way already. Now, let me talk about one hour. Do if you, somebody just gave you a million dollars today? Would you be here next Sunday? Or would you be flying to Y? I don't know. But what would you do? It's a trust factor. See, it's not about money. Money is never the issue. But money says money is never the problem. It's, it's a love of money. You can be worth five million dollars, but if you trust Jesus above that, you're good. God trusts you with what He can trust you with. That's your factor of knowing how much money, whatever we can make in life. When you begin to say, I can make it over here because I've got what I need in this life. And Jesus is good. He's here with me. But I'm going to depend a little more on here because I got it. I can do this and I can do that and I can retire when I want to do that. That's when we're in trouble. But 
or one we have a trusting relationship, no matter how much He blesses us, we still trust Him. And that's what He wants to do in your life. When you step into that promise line, He knows. He knows you. He knows you better than anybody. And the only reason sometimes things don't happen as quick, listen to me, as fast as they could, is because He's so going to bless your life. He's going to blow your mind what He's going to do in your life. But the reason it takes longer it because he knows if you get it too soon, you're going to mess up. That's the only reason he hasn't blessed you right now with whatever he's going to do. He's giving you the manna maybe today right now. He's giving you the manna. He's watching over you with the cloud and the heat at night. He's giving you what you need. Just You're just making it. You just get by. You don't understand. But you better get ready because if you follow the Lord and you sit down and you trust him, really, when you step into that promised land, he's going to blow you away what he's going to do because you learned in your situation because of what you've been through. No matter how much he's going to bless you, you will always trust him. And that's the only reason today is why you might be going a little longer through what you're going through. Because God is going to so bless you because you've trusted to sit down and to rest and watch what he's going to do. Let's pray. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, when God blesses, He adds no sorrow with it. And I don't just say you don't go through things. That's not what I'm saying. But when you look at your life as a whole, He so blesses you that you're not messed up in the middle of a blessing down the road. When God blesses you, listen to me, there's no sorrow with it. It's not like the world. It's not how the world lives. Will you trust Him today? He wants to bless you. God so wants to bless you. He's promised to bless you. But will you let His face, will you be in His presence? Will you look to Him and see the eyes of Jesus? Look at you. There's nothing like it. The warmth, the understanding, He's got to have. He wants you to be in His presence today. And He will bless you. He will bless you if you're in His presence. I want you to think about it just for a minute. I could have gone a little longer today, but I want you to just take time right now. Before you get up and we're going to leave, when we dismiss the Lord, I want you to just dwell right now where you're at. As a teenager, with kids at school, I, I don't know, with a surety of the future, with, with the loss of a job, with a heartache in your family, I, I don't know what it is. But will you let the warmth of Jesus shine on you, right? Will you see Him? Will you see Him? And let His Spirit so speak to your heart. Secondly, Dave, please, I know it's so foreign to you, but will you try not to get, will I try not and get in the way? Will you sit down? Will you just sit down? Not figure it out. I said, Lord, you knew me before all of this in my life. Nothing surprises you. And I'm going to rest and I'm going to trust you. And if it's going on a little longer in your life right now, of whatever it might be, you are his child. And he knows he's going to so bless you. He's going to so bless you. He's got to wait just a little longer because he knows he knows you. So don't think. Don't think he's not going to bless you. He is. He's going to so bless you. Did he just please hear me now as I close. He just wants to make sure that you will always, always,
always depend on Him in every way and every life. Ever He might do and how He will bless you. Father, as we close today, Lord, You promised to bless us. And we praise You today. We're here. We worship You today because we know, first of all, You've promised and we're going to heaven. Lord, if there's someone here today that doesn't know You as their Savior, and I, I just ask You, Lord, that... Uh, <coughs> Lord, they would accept you. They would come forward. And, and those that are Christians, Lord, help us, Lord, to see you, to see your face, to see your eyes, to feel your warmth. It's all good. So, Lord, we trust you today. We're going to try. And we're going to try and sit down. And Lord, again, if there's someone here today that has tried life on their own, and do it. of course we can. We need you. Your grace. Lord, your mercy. Lord, your favor. So Lord, because of those things, you sent Jesus to die on the cross. And if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, may they come forward today. May they accept you today. Maybe they've watched someone else walk through this life and they know they want that. That's, that's what you want for us. And you said it's freely given to all, no matter who we are, what we do, where we are in life. All we have to do is step by faith, by faith, trust you. May they do that today and I will pray with them and they can ask you to be their Lord and Savior and find heaven as their home. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand